Hello, I'm Atsuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's word to you today. Now we're in the month of March, and this is a new week. And see, God's love for you is permanent. He cannot change. And because he cannot change, if he has declared his love for you, that can never change. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, I want us to release our faith even as we call forth or make a request for our daily bread. Join me right now in releasing your faith. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, today I want to begin to share with us what I have tied to. God loves you. God loves you. Now, this is the foundation of every thought of God. This is the foundation of the Bible. This is the foundation of everything that we do as Christians. The foundation of it is embedded in this truth that God loves you. Praise God. You know, John 3, 16, popular scripture we quote every time, but I wonder how many of you have been able to relax and relate it to yourself in truth. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now take note, it says, for God so loved the world. For God so, note that word, so. So it's not a question about whether God loves the world or he doesn't love the world. He was more, he was talking more about the extent to which God loved the world. That's why he used the word so. For God so loved the world that he gave, meaning his love for the world consumed him to that point that he was willing to give a pricey material. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, you relate it with, I mean, with today's world and say, do you know what? This guy bought that girl a Range Rover Sports. And everyone was like, huh? Ha! You know, you know what I say, man? He must really love her. Now, why? They are seeing the extent to which this person was willing to sacrifice or the kind of value this person is placing in his relationship with that person. You see that now? So, whether the person has the money or not, I mean, the thought is, He's not going to buy that for everybody. So for him to buy this, whether he has the money or not, for him to buy this for this person, this person must really, really be special. So for God to sacrifice Jesus for the world should begin to give you an idea how much he loved the world. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Because I want us to begin to look at things from the true perspective. And, and this is where a lot of Christians go wrong. Because you face challenges. The thoughts that begin to come to your mind when you are faced with challenges tells a lot about how much you have believed in God or if you even believe in the first place. So now, he lets us know this. And I'll tell you this today. Do you know the creation of the whole world was because of God's love for man? God didn't finish the world and started thinking, mm, what do I do? I need someone to manage it. Who's going to manage it? Mm, let me create a man. No, sir. The thought of God from the beginning was to make man. You need to understand this. Man was not the last thing God created. The truth is, man was the first thing God created. Now, to 
Because he had that in mind, he had to now create the environment that will be conducive for this man. That's the reason the angels wonder and say, what is man that you are mindful of him? What is the son of man that you visit him? Because they've never seen this before. Now, angels have been with God for so long. They've never seen God saying, hey, I'm, I'm going to spend time with this angel or I'm going to spend time with this being. But then they saw God go into this project and he created an environment here on earth. He made sure the environment was conducive made everything ready for man. Now, they see God. Say, hey, I'm going to visit man. Who is this? We, Eli Kubasia, we are an amazing creation to the heavens. Oh, you didn't know that? They look at us and they wonder, what is this? Who are these? Now, I know, I know most of you, all you can think of yourself is how terrible you've been, how, how a failure you've been, how you've tried to make things work, they didn't work. You've tried to live a good life. You've tried to even live a righteous life. You couldn't, you couldn't succeed in that. You, you look at yourself like, you know what, yeah, what's the point? Is it even worth it? But I'm telling you that before, you know, you know, the Bible lets us know that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God saw you as a sinner and he decided to take responsibility for your sin. I told you many times on this broadcast Love is responsibility. Anyone who claims to love must take responsibility. Yeah. That's why the Bible says, husbands, love your wife. What's it talking about? Take responsibility for your wife. I'm going to tell you something today. No matter how hard it sounds in your ears, I'm going to tell you the truth. Because, you know, one day the Lord spoke to me and said, son, you must be prepared to tell people the truth. And then he said to me, he said, the thing about the truth is this. One day, whether they accept it today or not, one day they are going to meet me. That's God now. He, he was talking about himself. One day they are going to meet me. And the day they meet me, let it be that they realize that day that what you told them then was the truth. So there is no point pampering people and saying, hey, you know, Jen, this is the truth. You may not believe it now. You may not even fully understand it now. But one day you're going to meet God for good or for bad. You know what I mean by that? If you do well, you're going to meet him for good. If you do bad, you're still going to meet him. <laughs> Praise God. But then that day you meet him because your memory is intact. That day you meet him, you realize what I'm about to tell you right now is the truth. And this is it. As a husband, now I just finished last month talking, um, having an episode with my wife. Uh, we're trusting the Lord within the year, we'll still do something, you know, of that nature, just to be a blessing to you. Now we were sharing our testimonies, but then I started talking to my wife and we're waiting for the Lord to give us the go ahead. So we'll talk about, now we'll talk about marriage proper and, and relationships, praise God. So now if you are married, you're, you're a husband, you must take full responsibility for your wife. Now, many times we find men who are trying to um, change their wives. Who, who, who complain about their wives. Now, of course, you, you sometimes have cases where uh, the situation is just out of this world. You know what I mean by that? But then we're speaking generally you now. So you find men who are, oh, my wife needs to change. My wife needs to change. My wife needs to do this better. My wife doesn't know how to cook. My wife doesn't know how to clean the house. My wife doesn't know how to take care of me. My wife doesn't, all those complaints 
you have. And some of you even go around telling people, my wife did this, my wife did that. First and foremost, sir, if you love your wife, and that's the first thing you must tell yourself the truth about. Because many men don't even know that they don't love their wives. They say, you know, they actually answer when you say, do you love your wife? They answer, yes, as far, that is what I'm supposed to do, right? So <laughs> the answer is yes. But in truth, they don't. Now, how do you know they don't? Because love is responsibility. So when you don't have the ability to respond, you don't love. Ability to respond, you don't love. So now in that case, you don't love because you don't have the ability to love. So I'm sorry, sir. Something is wrong with you. Number two, if you have the ability, but then you don't do it, it means you have a problem with your willingness. It's still a problem on your side. So before you start correcting your wife, the first thing you must do is take responsibility. Now we learn from the Lord. The Lord, God didn't come to judge. He didn't come. Now the world was full of sin and, and all that stuff. He didn't come to judge without taking responsibility first. He looked at it and said, you know what? These people must be behaving the way they behave because I've lost touch with them. I'm going to take responsibility for it. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bear their, all their sin. I'm going to bear it. So I'm going to sacrifice this. Then from there, I will begin to instruct them. Now that's the first step to take as a husband. Now, when you study scriptures, the Bible did not say wives love your husband. It said husbands love your wife. The reason is because man was created first. And two, the woman was created for the man. Are you getting what I'm saying? So what that, all, that means is this. The man came first and the man ought to bear responsibility for his wife. Now, when we talk about responsibility, sometimes people just think about money. No. No. It's the thing of the heart first. How do you see your wife? Are you, are, are, is, are, is your heart large enough to embrace her? Not just embracing with the hand. When you see that your wife has these deficiencies, is your heart large enough to embrace her? And in embracing her, you look around her and look through her. Kaliba <laughs> And then you begin to think of the solution before you start talking, before you start shouting. You look at it and you, you, you begin to create. Now, that's what the wise man, because that's what God will do. You, you look at the situation, okay, you know what? Because sometimes you spend a lot of time talking and talking, you're not seeing results. The reason is because you're not acting right. You are not acting right. I'm talking to every man who's complaining about his wife. Take the responsibility first. I'm teaching you what God did. If we do what God did, now we, we, we are loyal to the Lord. We love the Lord. We sacrifice everything for the Lord because of what he did for us. Now, not just because somebody told us that this is what God did for us. Now, if you have come to experience the love of God, if you have come to experience him as God, you will have no choice but to submit completely to him. Now, the Bible says wife submits to your husband. Now, number one, he has to be a husband first. Now, when he says husband, number one, number two. Now, now actually, he's husband. Now, that's the first thing. The next, he has to be acting in love. Now, it is love that you submit to. Yeah. 
So we submit to the Lord because we see his love. We see, we see. Everyone who, have ex who has experienced God will have no problem submitting to God. And truly speaking, every woman who has experienced love will not never have a problem with submission. Why do we submit to God? Because we know He's got our back. Why would God tell you to give all the money you have? Because you know He's got your back. Because number one, you know He's bigger than that. You know, none of us think, hey, God has become broke, so now He needs my money. Ah, if I give Him my money, now can He revive Himself? Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, you know, sometimes men think, can you imagine my wife, she, I told her to bring all her money. She refused to bring all her money. The truth is she doesn't trust you. Why won't she trust me? Am I not her husband? No, it's not about trusting you, like doubting if you're her husband or not. She doesn't trust your ability. You haven't shown it. You haven't shown it yet. I'm telling you about how I'm talking to you about I'm, the, the topic of what I'm sharing is God loves you. But now I'm bringing out those areas where we, we fall deficient of his love because we did not understand him. And so the reason people don't, under, don't, don't flow in the love of God and it's not reflected in their lives is because they fall short of his love. So you find this happen in marriages. I'm, I'm using marriage now because that is the nearest thing we, we, we can compare with the relationship that God has with us. So you find out that the woman is not trusting and that's the problem she has with submission. The reason she is not submitting fully is because she doesn't trust you. She doesn't trust your ability. If your wife knows that you've got ability to take care of her. I'm telling you the truth. She will bring everything she has before you. And I'll tell you what, having the ability to take care of her has nothing to do with having all the money in this world. <laughs> it's not about the money. She will hardly check your bank account. What she is looking at is what is coming out from your mouth, what is coming out from your heart. If you always, what, 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 what is this? How can you, how can you, how can you? Now, when you begin to talk like that, you are playing down on your ability. You are confessing, I don't have the ability to cater for this. I don't have the ability to take care of you. When you're always complaining, how can you buy this? And didn't you see the cross? Didn't you see the price? Can you see? Don't you see? Now there is a way to communicate that. Can we leave this now? I know it's good. But can we leave this now? Then to complain when you begin. Now watch what comes out of your mouth. When you begin to complain, and not just finances, this has a lot to do with everything about your life. What you are communicating matters a lot. Because sometimes we communicate things to our children without realizing that we are damaging their belief in love and in our ability to love them. So you are raising up children who are not even trusting in your love for them. It brings us to that same statement. Love is responsibility. I'm telling you, your children ought to grow up knowing that you love them. It doesn't mean you have to have all the money. No. Have we seen God's accounts before? Talk to me now. No, we haven't. Have we seen how many millions of dollars and, and that God has stored up somewhere that he will take, used to take care of us? No, we haven't. Haven't there been times that we felt God had failed? Haven't there been times we felt, oh Lord, I want this new car and it didn't work? Haven't there been times, haven't there been times that, that we felt, oh God, uh, 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 I, I need this and it didn't show up? Many times. How come? We still trust him. It's not about the money in your bank account, brothers and sisters. 
is about the words coming out of his mouth. And when he eventually speaks, oh, you see. Uh, now you, you continue to see this truth that he's got your best interest at heart. There is no time that God has revealed himself that we didn't realize that he's got our best interest at heart. I'm telling the truth. This is exactly what your wife should see in your life. This is exactly what your children should see in your life. Now, it doesn't matter how you discipline them. It doesn't matter how you, they must think and look at you and see love in you. And that can only happen when you first, you as a man, receive love the same way it is presented to you by God, who's your father. Now, this is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk on this as long as the Lord will permit us to go on. Praise God. I just want to pray for you now because my time is up today. Listen, believe that God loves you. And you will begin to practically experience his love. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Jesus. God is healing someone with, with a heart problem. There's a pain at the center of your chest, actually. The center of your chest, there's, there's a pain there. But the Lord is taking out that pain right now. Can you take a deep breath right now? Take a deep breath. Yes, and out. If you can just take, stand up and walk around. Taking deep breaths and releasing them. Taking deep breaths and releasing them. I, I see the Lord healing something inside your chest. Something, there's been a pain right at the middle here. Be healed right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is well with you. Praise God. Father, I pray that everyone listening to me right now will begin to practically experience your love in their lives. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.